Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. My guest today is the one, the only, Mr. Productivity. Now you might be thinking, wow, she's really leading that up. Yeah, because he is that amazing. His name is Mark Struczewski. And the ski on the end is the most important part because believe it or not, I learned when I was on his podcast that a lot of people don't know that that's how you pronounce it. Um, Mark helps entrepreneurs deal with the overwhelm that disrupts their focus. And I can tell you, I am one of those many, many, many entrepreneurs who allow overwhelm to disrupt my focus. In addition to being a productivity expert, Mark is the host of the Mark Struczewski podcast. And guess what? I had the great privilege of being on that podcast. We'll talk about that a little bit with Mark today and how I ended up on his podcast and how I almost didn't a little <laughs> teaser for you. <laughs> Mark is also an online trainer and his strategies have guided entrepreneurs, CEOs, executive directors, business owners, and business corporate specialists to gain back control of their time. You can find out more about connecting with Mark and his mission to create confident leaders at Mr productivity.com. Welcome, Mark. I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Kathy, I am so thrilled to be here. You lit up the podcast on my show back on episode 791, April 2021. You're going to, I'm sorry, April. Yeah. 2021. This is here. We're still in 2021, Mark. Hello. Uh, I will send that link to you so you can link it up to the podcast. Tons of insights on there. And I am so excited to be on your show today. Oh, thanks, Mark. And um, let's just go ahead and talk about how that happened. You know, I get pitched um, people to be on their podcast and somebody, uh, a company that I work with pitched Mark um, as a podcast that I should be on. And Mark required that I had an interview with him. And, you know, I was really new to the podcast world. And I thought, I don't want to take the time to be interviewed by somebody to say if they want to have me on their podcast, who is this guy? You know, <laughs> so I emailed the company and said, thanks, but no thanks. Um, you know, doesn't necessarily seem like a good fit maybe. And they emailed back and told me all this amazing stuff about you. <laughs> oh my gosh. He has one of the best podcasts and gave me all these stats and gave me all this buildup about how I had to be on your podcast. And Believe me, I've been working with this company a year and they had never done that before because I had sent other replies back for different reasons of, I don't really think this is a good fit. And they would just always say, cool, we'll just go on to the next one. Not yours, Mark. <laughs> yours, they were like, no, you're making a mistake. You got to be on Mark's podcast. And guess what? They were right. And I was, and I actually emailed and thanked them for making sure that I took the extra step to be on your podcast. Well, I, I love being podcasting a podcaster. I'm not a podcasting. I am not podcasting, although that sounds like a good slogan. <laughs> I am podcasting. And I just love it. And about, it two, <laughs> about two months ago, someone said, you know, you're in the top 2% of all podcasts. I'm like, what? I, no, I'm not. I'm not Tim Ferriss or Joe Rogan. And there's this website that it, it goes by how many downloads you have, how many episodes you have, how many guests you have. And apparently worldwide, I'm in the top 2% a podcast, which I didn't know. Someone else said it told me that I just like the platform of podcasting because we can get into the ears of people and give them value. I'm so glad that the company suggests you get on my show because we had a ball on the show. Uh, you are a force of nature. I am a force of nature and we just want to serve people. Yeah, we might actually cause some kind of explosion to occur if we were ever in the same place at the same time physically. <laughs> Absolutely. I I was just telling somebody that I was on a meeting with before this. I said, I have to go because I'm interviewing Mark, who is crazier than I am. And they're like, I don't think that's possible. And I said, oh, yeah. Have you listened to the podcast? Go listen. His podcast. And by the way, I just want to say, um, and I might get some haters about this, but here's how I really feel. 
I I listen to your podcast much more than Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss. Aww, now, have I listened you. to theirs? Yes, but not. I don't. I don't subscribe. I don't download. I don't listen every time like yours. Yours is. Um, yours is the one I go to because yours has got that energy and information nuggets of gems that you can take and actually implement and do stuff with. Mark, well, would wanna, you share I'll, with people? I want to thank you. I just want to thank you really quickly for saying that because it means yeah. a lot to me. And I, I don't know when this whole thing shifted, but I had a guest on my show. Uh, his name is Dave Knoll. He created the Food Network's Chop. The, the big, sh- uh, big show Ooh, like, I love on my show and he was, he, he came on my show and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Dave Noel. And he goes, oh my gosh, it's Mark Stuchowski. I'm like, yeah, that's funny. He goes, no, I'm serious. I can't believe I'm on your show. He was serious. He goes, you are a legend. And I'm like, when did people start looking up to me? Because you know, we're our own worst critic, but he was, sure. it, he was so excited to be on my show. And then you are on my show. I'm, I've met the coolest people on my show and uh, the, the poor people come on who are low energy by the end of the show. They're like, did I just go through a spin cycle class? That's the kind of guy I am. So thank you again for being on my show and have me on yours. Mark, you just gave me a new slogan for you. You are the Peloton of podcasting. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> I because love that. Because that's exactly how you feel. You feel like you have done an exercise session, a, sp- <laughs> a bike spinning session by the time you're done on your show. And I knew it was going to be like that today, too, because you're you. How do you have so much energy? You have uh, a- my, my secret is I love what yeah. I do. I wake up mm-hmm. out of bed loving what I do. I explain it this way. I feel like a little boy at Christmas morning every day. And I wish other people felt like this when people go, I get paid a lot of money, but I hate the job. I got a mansion, but I hate the job. I'm like, I isn't being happy more important than money. I'd rather be happy. I'd rather make $10,000 a year and be happy than make $10 million a year and be miserable. And there's so many people yeah. who stick in the job. They hate, they hate their boss. They hate the wallpaper. They hate the commute. I'm like, is it really worth it? Cause you're miserable. Mm. So that's it's not yeah. life is too short. There's yes. only one life. Yes. And you know, I, uh, I don't know what you call it, but I call that the golden handcuffs. When you have a job that you really don't like, But for whatever reason, and sadly, Mark, there's a lot of people who aren't even making 10 million. They're they're making maybe 50,000 and have decent benefits. And they feel like they've got those golden handcuffs and they're too fearful to take that next step. What do you tell people like that? Well, I always tell people, I ask them one question. I learned this question from Gary Vaynerchuk many years ago. Do you want to be happy or do you want to be wealthy? Because you can be both but I Mm -hmm. think you need to choose happiness first. Okay. I don't Uh, know of a single story where someone's laying in the deathbed and they they got maybe minutes to live. They never say, Oh, I wish I would have made one more deal or I wish I would have gone to one more board meeting or I wish I would have gone and made one more client. They always say, I wish I had more time with my family. I wish I had more time to have fun. Well, you have the time now. Mm -hmm. So, Right. Don't worry about the benefits. I've been un- I've been unemployed because I am. Uh, I actually <laughs> entrepreneurs are unemployable. I guess that's what they say. You, you are definitely unemployable, as am I. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been unemployable <laughs> since two thousand five. Two thousand five. I could never go back and work for corporate America again. Never, because mm. there's all these rules and these hours and these meetings. Oh my gosh, it's boring. I want to be in control of my life. No, I'm not. I don't have a Learjet. I, I don't have a mansion, but you know what? I am happy. I'm very satisfied with what I do in life. Well, and uh, you also live where you want to live. And I know you have a beautiful home because I've gotten to see quite a bit of it in different Zoom sessions that I've had with you and your wife because I had the privilege of getting to meet with her too. Yeah. And, and it's like, like we don't, like I said, we don't live in a mansion, but it's ours. And so many people, they're not happy. They get, they get a, and they want B, they get B, they want C, they get C, they want D and they're never happy because mm-hmm. they're always mm-hmm. in the next pursuit. And I'm like, Oh yeah, be happy. And I, and I, one of the things to tell people, and this is nothing earth shattering, you know, I write, I'm, I have a gratitude journal. I have a bullet journal. Every morning I write at least five things I'm grateful for. Now, sometimes it's like a good night's sleep or I woke up this morning, but I think if you really spend time writing down the things you're grateful for, 
you're going to be more appreciative what you have now. So many people yes. say, I'll be happy when. No, you won't. If you're not happy now, you're not going to be happy when. That, that's kind of tweetable there. That's right. That's tweetable right there. <laughs> say it again, Mark. Uh, if you're not happy now, you won't be happy when I got to tweet that because <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a good really one. good. That's really good. That I'm is really, really grateful good. for having that tweet there. That is really good. I think you should make an, an, because you, you do Facebook or what social media are you on? Actually, Let's get that out there right now. Yeah. So I watched, um, what's that show on Netflix? Social Dilemma. And I got scared. Mm. I delete all my social media platforms. And then I came back. So I'm back on Facebook. Look for Mr. Productivity. I'm on Instagram. Look for Mr. Productivity. I went back on TikTok. Look for Mark Stuchowski because I know people get value from TikTok or from Instagram or from Facebook or from LinkedIn. So I want you to listen to my podcast and go to MrProductivity.com. But I know people, the reality people are in social media. So that's, I'm, I'm trying to be everywhere, but I don't do these mm -hmm. really creative things. All these kids do. And they, I just, <laughs> I, I'm not that fancy, Kathy. I don't, I don't even don't know do, what the creative things are. Mark, well, I don't even well, know how to I, log into Instagram. <laughs> well, the first time I went to TikTok, there was this kid who jumped up in the air. And then by the time he came down, he changed shirts like 40 times. And I'm like, oh, you know yeah, I saw it took that to make that video. TV. I'm like, I'm not that creative. Long I go time. on there. Hmm. I record a 60 second video providing value. Like today I provided uh, content was uh, never assumed. So I, I'm a daily runner, as you know, and I woke up and I six o'clock in the morning, I looked at one weather app and says heavy rain all day. And I looked at another weather app, heavy rain all day. I stuck my head out the window and sprinkling. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go running. So trust, but verify. Okay. So you know, you're, you trust your weather apps, but stick your head out the window. Maybe they're wrong. And today they are wrong. Yeah. And I got my three miles mm -hmm. in. Good for you. And you're in Florida or, or no, you just visited Florida. I'm in Texas. You're in Texas. Yeah, Last time I, I talked to you, you guys were getting ready to visit Florida, weren't you? Yes. We are going to go uh, to Florida to see my folks. My dad's 80. My mom's 76, but she has late onset Alzheimer's. So she's a three-year-old mm. and oh, it's wow. very difficult. If you've never seen anyone that you know and love that has deteriorated like drastically. I mean, my mom, mm -hmm. she's got to wear the diapers. She's got to have people shower her. Oh I mean, three years ago, she mm -hmm. was like that. And she just mm -hmm. went off the cliff. Now my grandmother, my maternal mother, my maternal grandmother died of Alzheimer's. My mom will die of Alzheimer's. And mm -hmm. I am so big on health and wellness. Cause I talked to one of my mom's doctors and I said, is there anything I can do to mitigate right. getting Alzheimer's? He goes, matter of fact, there is get enough sleep. Uh, don't eat a lot of processed foods, exercise, exercise your brain. So I'm trying to learn Spanish. You know, you can do things now before you get Alzheimer's. There's things you can do now, but people wait until they get diagnosed and it's too late. So I'm trying to take care of myself now. I'm only 56. And I run every day, like uh, as of July 8th, 2021, the day we're recording the show, I don't know when it's going to come out. I've run 1,410 days in a row every day. Wow. That's amazing. I'm impressed. I am impressed. And while we're talking about this, I'm so curious, how do you eat? What, what's healthy eating for you? Well, what I should tell you is fruits and vegetables <laughs> and really good meats. And I don't have any crap, but working as an entrepreneur, when it gets toward like before we go shopping days, there's not a lot in the house. So Uber eats is my friend and, you know, but I try to limit it to once a day. I try to eat lots of fruits and vegetables. You know, our body doesn't need processed foods. Our body doesn't need sugar. Our body doesn't need diet soda or regular soda. It wants the good food. But there are people who are militant about how we should eat. And I'm like, look, at, I'm a real human right. being. I don't eat McDonald's yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But I do have Uber Eats bring me food because, you know, I work all day long. And I, I am not a cook. My idea of a gourmet cook, Kathy, is put in the oven for five minutes on high stir, put it on for two more minutes, let it cool. That's, that's my gourmet. My wife can cook. I can't cook. Okay. I can't cook. It's a good thing. The dog, I just have to scoop and dump because if I had to cook for the dog, it would be dead. So I just admit that I'm a taste tester in our house. So I'm not a cook either. And, um, 
you're you'll get a jiggle, you'll get tickled out of this because my husband is a cook, but he cooks if it's not fried or covered in butter, he's not going to cook it. All right. And I too, am like you, I'm trying to eat healthy because um, my mother died. She had her first heart attack at my age now and and I'm 64. And then she went on to have a series of heart attacks. She did live till 77, but she lived very poorly until then. And, And I don't want that to happen to me. So I started eating healthy fruits and vegetables, all those things you talked about. And like you, I don't cook. I don't want to cook. I don't want to learn how to cook. If it's not microwavable or I can stick it in a toaster oven, it isn't going to happen. (laughs) So I signed my husband up for a healthy cooking online cooking program. (laughs) You signed your husband up. I signed him up. I signed him up. And then I sent him the login. Oh. And, <laughs> and oh, by I the said, way, you got an you email. This- could check your email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you take this cooking class? Sent the email and he hasn't taken it yet. And I signed him up two months ago. Oh. So I keep dropping hints. So how's that cooking class going? And he's like, it's not so far. Do you want to take it? And I'm like, no, but it'll be awesome when you do. <laughs> hint, hint. Oh my goodness. So that we'll see if he funny. ever takes it. <laughs> well, I see my thing is our body doesn't need processed food, but if you have it occasionally, there's an old saying right. like everything in moderation. Uh, I say, no, you can't beat your wife in moderation. Okay. So that doesn't apply. Don't stop saying everything in moderation, but if you mm-hmm. have Uber eats once in a while, even once a day. Okay. But then you're eating fruits and vegetables rest day. I think it's okay. It's not the best. That's right. But the reality is if you're like you and me, we were busy entrepreneurs. Someone brings in uh, food to our house. We eat it. We're fine. You know, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just telling you it works for me, but it's not right. just what you eat. You got to exercise as well. So I run every day. Now you can't outrun a bad diet. So you got to do a, a bunch of things, but a lot of people are not taking care of themselves. They're like, okay, well, I got a meeting. I got a presentation. I got a client. And what's happening is they're not even having any semblance of food. They're having Snickers bars or they're not eating well. And as you know, if you're not taking care of all parts of your life, you could be the smartest productivity expert in the world. But if you weigh 800 pounds, you're unhealthy. So you're not going to be able to serve your clients as well. So it all comes full circle. Totally agree with you. And I love your uh, take on moderation. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to guess here. (laughs) I don't even have to guess that you don't really do anything in moderation. Because somebody who runs more than 1000 days in a row, that's not moderation. And the speed at which you live life, that's not moderation. The level of happiness and joy you have. I mean, everything you do is to an extreme, which I personally love. I would have to say, I agree with you. I I agree Mm -hmm. with you. My wife on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, she works noon to nine. She sells cruises for a living. She recently went back to work because now you can cruise again. And I watch one 45 minute program when she's gone. I can't, I am so high energy. I can't sit and watch TV. So like this week I'm recording the NBA finals and you know, the Stanley cup finals and I don't watch it. And I just ask Siri who won the game because I, I'm not going to watch three hours. I could be creating content. I could be, you know, reading a book. I just, I just don't like watching a lot of television. It's just, it's gotten so bad that my wife and I, back in the day, when they canceled one show, we would see what's coming in the fall and we'd replace it. Now we're like, we're Mm -hmm. not going to look for the new shows. We're not. And we decided on, we decided, okay, we're going to get one streaming service. And we're like, what streaming service do we want to get? We don't want to get Netflix. We don't want to get Hulu or Amazon prime video. We settled on Apple TV plus for two reasons. Number one, they're all original programming. They don't have anything you get anywhere else. And number two, they don't have a quadrillion shows. So there's not a lot to watch there. And so you go watch a show and what they do, I love it. When they release a new season of a show, they don't release all eight or 10 episodes. They give you the first two. And then the next six weeks, they roll one episode out of the week. So you can't binge watch unless you watch, wait for the show to end. Because let's face it. If you're watching a show, you're not doing something that could serve people. And so I do watch TV, but I do it on my time when I want to watch it. And if it doesn't give me value, I stop watching it. I don't understand how people 
they go, hey, have you watched the latest baseball game? I said, first of all, I'd rather watch paint dry than watch baseball. Okay, because baseball <laughs> is so boring. I mean, you can watch the highlights of a baseball game in like 60 seconds. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I remember about four years ago, the Houston Astros won the World Series. And I knew how long baseball just goes on and on and on. So I recorded the game and I started watching it two and a half hours after it started. Do you realize I caught up to live programming? I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, every pitch, the guy steps out of the batter's box. He adjusts his helmet, just swing the bat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, but yes, that's, that's, I don't know where I was going with that, yeah. but that's, I ter- sure. Yeah, no, that's good. Value. That's that's an example of um, how you do productivity. So I just want to comment on Apple TV Plus because I totally agree with you. Their quality of programming is like there's I don't think there's a show on there that isn't really well done. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's not a whole lot on there. I agree. But they're really well done. Have you seen Ted Lasso? Um, I love that show so much. Hysterical. I, oh, my God. It is so well done. It is such a positive show. Yes. It's funny it's sweet it's it's everything you want out of a show i can't wait for season two which is coming up soon yep and what's funny is that had one eight episode season that came out last year it is still one of the top 10 most favorite most watched shows in the entire world and it's only on apple tv plus if you haven't had it go try it for a month it's five bucks ted lasso is hysterical what is it what it's about it's this uh, football club in england and they hired this goofy American yeehaw guy to coach the team. It is so funny. He's Mr. Positivity. It is hysterical. And uh, you'll love the show. And I can't wait till the new show comes out. That show's going to be around for a while because it's hysterical. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the I, I don't remember the the actor's name who's Ted Lasso. But he won, what, uh, Golden Globe? Yeah. 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 That's how good it is. He, yes. And he totally deserved it. It's really, really a good show. <laughs> yeah. You might have to have close captioning so, because they talk, they talk in that you know thick uh, British accent, uh, but it is funny. It's worth watching. Yeah. Uh, by the way, my husband who cannot understand um, British accents, he can't understand any accents. Um, <laughs> it, it, seriously, he just got hearing aids, so we'll give it another try now. But um, he was able to understand Ted Lasso's. Okay. So it's not as heavy as some of the shows. So, okay. but yeah, closed captioning is awesome. We, I turn it on for a lot of things that are, <laughs> yeah. they're in English. Just they act, they talk too soft or too fast or have a different mm-hmm. accent. Absolutely. So Mark, let's talk about how you became Mr. Productivity. First, I want to mention, if you're looking for Mr. Productivity, it is not M-R, it is M-I-S-T-E-R productivity. So it's all spelled out. We will have the links, but you know, sometimes when I'm listening to a podcast, I'm also Googling, trying to find it. So (laughs) spell it out. Um, But how did you become Mr. Productivity? I was fired from my corporate job back in 2005 which now I am so thankful because I probably wouldn't be on your show right now. I wouldn't be Mr. Productivity. So I was fired and I became an entrepreneur. I didn't know how to spell that word. I didn't know what it was, but I became (laughs) a wedding and portrait photographer to start because I honestly just wanted to be, have the cool gear. And now we're talking 2005. Facebook was a baby. Twitter was a baby. There was no Instagram. There was no TikTok. Was no Zoom. Exactly. And and so a lot of people did either email, mar- email marketing or direct response marketing. And I'm like, okay, well, I knew this lady in my Bible study class was a speaker. So I went there and I said, look it, can you teach me how to be a speaker? And she goes, yeah, you, you do this, that, and other thing. So the first time I spoke was, I'll never forget this. You never forget your first time, the national association of women in construction. And I was so nervous, Kathy. I was teaching them how to take better pictures of their construction sites where they had a, you know, show for the shareholders. And I was like shaking. I mean, I was wearing a jacket. I was sweat through my shirt. And at the end, I, you know, I, of course, when you're so nervous, you're just like, get me through this presentation. And I had my notes and all this other stuff. And my wife said, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They were taking so many notes. I'm like, really? And, and people came up to me afterward and say, oh my gosh, you're such an amazing speaker. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. So I, I started speaking more and more and I started getting into my, my, um, my zone. And then I heard from someone, you know, don't use notes because if people, you don't use notes, people trust you more. So I don't use visual aids and anything like that. 
Well, I said, well, I didn't want to talk about photography. So what am I going to talk about? So I came up with one topic, which was called how to overcome roadblocks in your path to success. Fine. Ooh, if you're a, topic Joe, too. A, well, if you're a Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss or a Damon John, Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. But when you don't have any time, any type of success, you might not want to talk to people about being <laughs> successful. So I got rid of that. Oh, got and, it. Got yeah. it. It wasn't authentic. <laughs> then I started coming up with a topic called from hopeless to hopeful. I have no idea. I don't do drugs. Don't know what I was coming up with there. So one day I'm on the phone with one of my coaches and I was not, I was having an uncharacteristically down day. And he goes, what's going can't on? Even I can't even imagine what? a down day in Mark's world. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and he goes, what's going on? I said, well, you know, I, I really love speaking and training, but I don't know what I should talk about. He goes, well, why don't you talk about productivity? And I said, I don't know where that came from, but why would you say that? He goes, I know a lot of people. I'm a coach myself and you're naturally productive. You need to share that gift with the world. And the rest, as they say, is history. Well, that is exactly how I think a lot of people end up finding what their thing is, their purposes, their thing they want to talk about or work on is, is they, they try a couple of different things mm -hmm. and then it, it finally gels. So anybody out there who's thinking, I don't know what my thing is, start trying some, right? Yep. Just like yep. you did, Mark, yep. because you were learning how to be a speaker as you were figuring out what that hot yes. topic was. That yes. was going to be your thing. That's the important thing. So now when I speak, I will go out and speak like before COVID, I was out speaking a lot and, and people, I remember one time I spoke, it was in Galveston. There was a, an association I spoke to and I was the closing keynote speaker. And the guy before me was a walking cadaver. No, oh, no. emotion. <laughs> he, he really was, set you up. Well, <laughs> he was reading his slides. I mean, and I'm in the back of the room and people are starting to put their stuff in their bag and they're getting ready to work. Oh, and they're like, Oh, we're yeah. out of here. So they introduced me. I'm a ball of energy. I'm a force of nature. I come on. And the first things I say, I say, hi, I'm Mark Stuchowski. I said a couple things about me. I talk fast. I interrupt myself. So if another thought comes in my head, that thing's more important. I interrupt my thought. I will triple my own words, but get ready for a ride. And I just started going through my presentation three or four minutes into it. People are taking their bags out. They're like, their eyes are, they're like, oh my gosh, they're like, they're hitting their friends. Oh, I'm making fun of myself. And so like, holy crap. And by the end of the show, I got done and people go, do you, they asked my wife, does he have batteries? What's, oh my gosh, we've never seen a speaker <laughs> like him. And my wife goes, yeah, I live with this guy. This is who he is. This is not, he doesn't make this up. He really loves mm -hmm. serving people. And I, I mean, I probably lose five, five pounds of water weight, but I love what I do when I'm teaching. I love what I do. And people said, you are the real deal. Cause you know, some people are, I'm this great. I know this and I know that, but you know, they're full of BS. They go, you're the real deal. We can tell that you are real. And I love people. I believe most people on this planet are loving, caring, gentle people. It's only the people who are not are the ones getting on the news and are all over social media. Most people, I don't care if you're Iranian, Canadian, Australian, most people are good people. I really truly believe that. Unfortunately, they don't get the press. It's all the, the extremists. That get yes, the press. I agree. That's exactly right. Most people, I 100% agree with you, Mark. Most people are good people. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the, um, the news is if it bleeds, it leads, right? Yep. So are yep. we in? That's one of the many reasons I don't watch news. Do you watch news? How do you I watch, consume news? There's one news program I watch and I trust. Uh, the guy used to be on uh, Fox News. His name is Bill O'Reilly. He's got his own uh, website now. He does a four day a week newscast. Now, it's not 24 hours. It's one five minute broadcast. <laughs> and one thing I like about Bill Riley, he used to be a history teacher. So he doesn't do anonymous sources. He it nerves him to no end. He says, you know, people say, well, Trump did this. Anonymous sources said this. Well, who? Your neighbor? Yeah. Your, 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 your right. brother? And so he's really big on <laughs> your the dog. Facts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's really big on the facts. So when he reports, he said, okay, we got this. This is the, my source. He comes from the generation where you gave sources, like back in the Walter yes. Cronkite day, you gave sources. Right. Now everything, if you watch CNN, MSNBC, sources say, 
who are these sources? And he's got a book. He's got a. It can Achilles be their own opinion. They're sharing the source from. It can be their own brain. They're sharing the source from. Exactly, and he's got a whole series of books. He's uh, the the top selling yeah, history he does. book guy. I love his killing books, killing Patton, killing the SS, killing crazy horrors. I've learned so much because it's all fact based. I don't want to know your opinion. Okay. I right. want to know facts. And so uh, we pay, I pay $63 a year for him and I watch it every night at six o'clock. It's pre-taped. So it's not live. He goes live once in a while, like the January 6th incident in the Capitol. He did go live on mm -hmm. there, but it's just recorded and it's very well done. Now he, I don't agree with everything he says. He says some things I'm like, I don't agree with you, Bill, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't. The only mm -hmm. thing I agree with 100% is the Bible. Everyone else, I'm like, okay, most of the things I agree with, some things I don't agree with, but I think we have to use this thing between our ears called a brain and you say, yeah. does that make sense? Eh. So if someone right. says, I heard from who? The first thing I do, because Bill's got me <laughs> trained now. Oh, I heard, I heard if you don't get the COVID shot, you turn into a banana. Okay, who said that? Oh, people. <laughs> no, tell me who, who? And, and so I don't like when people say they, who are they? You hear it all the time. Right. Oh, they say they, who's they? I, I think that mm -hmm. I respect you more if you say, look, it, I heard from this source. Here's the link. Mm -hmm. This is what they said. Mm -hmm. Cause I can go verify that. And I think so many people right. are just saying, I heard on social media, I heard on TikTok. Oh. Um, okay. Um, They're literally sharing things. They don't even know where the source came from. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. I mean, if and you... I know they're not doing it to be malicious, mm -hmm. but they don't know what you have learned from bill, which mm -hmm. is what's the source yeah. and take the time to find that out before sharing. And I'm, it doesn't matter. It's not just Bill O'Reilly. When a guest comes on my show, I'm looking for guests like you who can say, look at either I know the source or I have done it. Like when you came on my show, right. you rocked it and you were the source because you were there. OK, don't tell right. me that you heard about it someplace on Twitter two years ago, because that doesn't mean anything to me. And I think everyone listening to the show is not in their head and go, yeah, I want to know the source. That's why right. mainstream media has lost all credibility because they're doing all non yes. sources and us intelligent viewers are like, what's the source? Just tell mm -hmm. me what the source is. And if you mm -hmm. can't tell the source, then I, I don't trust you because you could, like you said a few minutes ago, that you could be making it up. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Uh, I was actually writing uh, an email to go out yesterday and I put statistics show. And then I was like, if I can't provide a link to those statistics, I can't include this. <laughs> I've heard the joke. So that, I literally uh, Googled it and then I couldn't find it. And I'm like, okay, I got to take that part out. I, I once heard that 97.5% of statistics on the internet are made up. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that too. And that was just that made too. up. Cause I just picked that number out of thin air. So just, uh, yeah, just be careful. when someone says something fact, have you ever heard of this, uh, a website called snopes.com? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So you go there and someone goes, oh, yeah, if you're on your phone too much, you, you turn into a banana and uh, you go, no, <laughs> no, it's not true. It was, you know, yeah. so look, do right. your research. Don't believe everything you say. I, I, I want to say believe half of what you hear and none of what half of what you see and none of what you hear or something like that. I forget what that was yeah. back in the day. Yeah. But just because someone says something, you know, be skeptical. I don't know about that. Right. right. So let's do a couple of productivity tips because I want to give people a little taste of. I don't um, know anything about productivity. Uh, what, what, what? <laughs> I'll tell you what they said. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and one of the things I'd like to get, have you just give an example of is, which just blew me away, is how you produce your podcast. <laughs> so uh, tell everybody, you know, because like mine, we're air, we're recording it July 8th. It's not going to air for months because I'm not <laughs> pr productive in the way Mark is. So Mark, tell people how you do yours. Well, I'm a lunatic. So um, I wasn't doing an episode a day, but then I did an episode a day, Christmas 2020 until New Year's Day or New Year's Eve day. And then I did one on January 1st and said, you know what? I'm going to do an episode a day in 2021. I didn't think it all the way through because that's 365 new episodes. <laughs> it sounded really good on New Year's Day, but I committed to it. Right. And then wouldn't you know it? My first four guests canceled on me. Technical problems, <gasps> getting sick. And of course, I already committed. So I had to create solo episodes. 
But what oh, I do wow. now, the solo episodes I could do in advance. OK, when a guest says my Internet's dead or my computer died, I have to create a solo episode. Those are not the big deal. So when I have a guest like you on the show, literally, I've got my process down so well that once we finish recording, literally within 90 minutes, it's all done up and ready scheduled for tomorrow. Now, in the and that is so brilliant. So yeah. it takes you maybe three hours from start to finish to record, post everything, right? A podcast, right? That's now, amazing. The biggest secret is, is I don't edit my show. So I always tell my guests it's a clean podcast, no swearing. And I tell them there's two, uh, one word that starts with eight, one word that starts with D. You can't say those words. Can't say the name of the deity unless it's your savior. I mean, crystal clear. I get emails from people thanking me. It's a clean podcast. I don't edit the show. Now, if you sneeze, you fart, you know, something happens. The <laughs> microphone by your microphone falls. I will edit the stuff out. So that I know people say a 30 minute episode, you should edit for four hours. I'm like, I got oh, other things to do. I'm not editing for four hours. I mean, I got other things I got to no. do, you know? And so I, I got into a rhythm and, and I get it done pretty quickly. Now, I will not say my podcast is perfect, but people have said it's really cool because the, the whole thing is at the end of the line, my listener has got to be able to hear it and they got to get value from it. And I always tell people, and you know, this, I say, just because we record the interview doesn't mean it's going to be released. I've only had to twice not release an episode because people were either pitching the whole time or mm. they came across like, I've got it all figured out. Your listeners are moron. I'm not going to let that out to my listeners. And I had one lady about a year ago. She goes, if you can't guarantee the episodes out, I won't be in your show. I'm like, I respect that, but I, I can't guarantee it because I don't know what you're going to say on my show. If you're going to insult my listeners, I'm not going to put that episode out. I love my listeners. I know you listen. You love your listeners. Oh, if yeah. I said your listeners are stupid and moron, you wouldn't release this episode. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You're just one guest. I have listeners been with me from the beginning back in July 7, 2017. I'm not going to violate their trust because of you. And so mm -hmm. she, she got kind of upset. I'm like, look, I respect you. I'm not going to, I don't think bad of you, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. You know, and right. I, I wish more, I wish more podcasters did that. I wish they would care so much for their listeners and not about mm -hmm. the dollar or about the ratings care about the people taking mm -hmm. the time to listen to your show. Yeah. So, so many good gems in there. So one of the things I'm going to pick out of that is, um, don't, don't aim for perfection. Mm -hmm. So what do you aim for? I always say good enough is good enough. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't agree with me on that, but that's kind of my philosophy. What do you, what's your philosophy on perfection? There are two groups of people. There are people who will read a best-selling book. And as soon as they see a misspelling, oh my gosh, this book sucks. I, I like, it's one I look yes, at absolutely. nobody can even AI they're there. There's two, there's three different kinds of theirs. Okay. That's there's right. Kind of here. I'm like, but there are people who will stop at the first time they hear, Oh, the microphone oh, I'm out. <laughs> really? Those people, you're never going to please them. Okay. So for me, like I said, <laughs> if they're giving value, if they're not talking in a condescending tone, I'm good with it. OK, mm -hmm. I think, you know, as a Christian, only Jesus is perfect. So we have no hope of ever mm -hmm. achieving perfection. So why aim for it? Just mm -hmm. aim for serving your audience. You know, people mm -hmm. on social media, for example, they're trying to figure out the algorithm. Just serve. Don't worry about right. who's liking. Matter of fact, what I do now on Instagram is kind of a little tangent. But what I do on Instagram, I went back to Instagram. You can now hide like likes and views. So I turn those off. I don't want people judging my post by how many people like it. So I turn those off. Okay. I want to serve people. And I think if we just serve from our heart, we're, we're halfway there. Don't try yeah. to beat the system. Don't try to go out there and create a podcast or a post on social media because you want money. No, just serve from your heart. If everyone did that, we'd be so much better off. Absolutely agree with you. And, and the, the genuine, the authentic is really what people are, are craving mm -hmm. the actual personal connection, like you being the real you and Mark, I know you don't know how to be anything else. And that's one of the things I love about you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Well, I tell you what, this much. I, when I was fired from my job at corporate in 2005, from 2005 to the end of 2020, I made a total of $40,000. And people are listening right now. They're like, that's 16. What? I have How did you live on that? I have a very supportive wife who told me don't stop. Okay. Why do I share that Good story? For Good for her. Because I believe in Pareto's principle. 80% of the people are struggling. 80% of the people don't know how to do social media. And when I share my story, I've gotten so many DMs going, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. So by you holding and hiding your story, you're not helping people. Share. Don't wait till you make it, then share. Oh, remember back then? No, I shared my mm -hmm. story in the moment. And so many people thanked me because they're going through the same struggle. But if everyone's out there going, oh, I've got it all figured out, even though they can't pay their mortgage, well, how is that serving anybody? Right. I, I totally agree. The other thing that I heard you mention was process. You have a specific process in place. So is that another productivity tip? Yes. I love processes. Okay. Because when you set up a process, you don't take as much brain energy. Okay. Cause your brain knows step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. If you don't have a process, if you do it one way on Monday, another way on Tuesday, another way on Wednesday, you get the Thursday, your brain goes uh, step two, no one, four. you get so confused. So when you have a process and it becomes ingrained in your brain, your body can work on autopilot and it expends less energy and you get more stuff done. That's why I can knock out a podcast in like 60, 90 minutes. Sometimes they get down to 45 minutes. Okay. Because wow. I've got a process and I encourage the listener to think about your life professionally and personally. How can you institute processes? It could be a morning routine. It could be your lunch routine, a bedtime routine, your exercise routine, whatever it is, make it so it's so automatic. You don't have to think about it because then you're expending less energy. You can be more productive. I love that. Um, was it Steve Jobs or somebody else who wore the same, Steve Jobs. you know, like yep. shirt the black all the time? So he didn't, jeans. Yep. Yeah. So he didn't have to think about what to wear. Exactly. Yeah. I really like that. I, I pretty much do that now. I wear a tiara and a t-shirt. I have seen you three <laughs> times, the pre-interview call, my interview, and now you've worn the same shirt. Hopefully you've washed it between times and the same tiara. <laughs> I actually have multiple of these shirts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so, um, so my husband who does our laundry only has to do it every two weeks to keep me in blue. This is my brand color, blue t-shirts. <laughs> and this is my favorite tiara. So it's the one I grab for my favorite people. Oh, I feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I do agree with you. That's why a morning routine is good. If you want to make sure you get something done, have a system, have a process, have a routine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people will be like, oh, how do you be spontaneous? Well, you're spontaneous outside of those yes. times, right? We're not talking about having a process for every minute of every day, but the major chunk stuff, you need to have a process. Okay. So if you like, say you leave work and every time on the way home from work, you pick up your dry cleaning, you stop at the grocery store, Okay. Well, try to make that. So you do, you don't do the grocery store, then the dry cleaning, you try to dry, you do it in the same order. You want to ingrain this. Think of it like a groove on a record. Those of you who are old enough, like Kathy and I know what a record is. They put grooves in the record and the needle would know where to go. That's what you want to do. If you do things differently. Okay. And not, there's nothing wrong with novelty. But why do you drive the same way to work every day? You know where the stoplight is. You know where the long light is. You know where people go through the stop sign. It's automatic. When you go to new way because of construction, you have to be more attention. Now, still pay attention when you're driving. But, <laughs> but like, like when my wife and I go to church, we know we're going down a certain road, this certain stretch, there's a pothole there. Why? I know the process. Now, they probably fixed it, but it's so ingrained in my brain to drive on this side of the road on this stretch of land because I know that that's what I'm talking about. You need to know this stuff. Processes make your life so much easier. So thank you for those tips. So we're going to um, talk about how, who do you work with? We talked a little bit about that, but like if somebody's like, wow, I want to bring Mark in as a speaker, or I want to, 
uh, work with him on some other level. How can people work with you and what type of people are you looking to work with? I am not looking for people who are like, I want to be more productive. That's why I talk about overwhelm <laughs> and frustration. Nobody comes to me and says, oh my gosh, I'm so unproductive. What they do is they say, I'm so overwhelmed with so many things I have to do on my to-do list. And so the people I work with and the people I'm looking to work for, look, work with are people who are overwhelmed, who say there's got to be more than this. They're working way too many hours. They're not enjoying their, their weekends, their time off with their family. They're not able to read or run or bike because they're so overwhelmed. I love when those people come to me and I give them solutions and they implement it and they go, oh my gosh, there is work outside of life. Because overwhelm in our 24-7, 365 society today is so huge. And I yes. want to help people un overwhelm themselves. And I've got simple ideas and I love working with those people. I want people also who will do the work. Just investing in me <laughs> is not... <laughs> solving the problem. I mean, I'm reading Adam Grant's new book. I love this book. It's called uh, Think Again. An awesome book. Think Again, because it's called The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know and Why Ooh, You Think I love that. It. I love his author. But if I just bought the book and go, hmm, got his book and people go, oh, what you think of new Adam Grant's new book? Oh, I haven't read it. I just bought it. I mean, it's <laughs> people think you're stupid, right? And so it, it's not, I want to work with people who are going to do the work. When I say, do X, Y, and Z, they do it because I know X, Y, and Z works. And when people come back to me and they go, well, it didn't work. I'm like, okay, well, that's interesting. What didn't work? And they go, um, well, I didn't do it. Well, I knew you didn't do it because I know X, Y, and Z do it <laughs> work. We've all been there, Kathy. I know it hey, works. Absolutely. And they don't want to tell me they didn't work. So they just, they want to put the blame on me. And I'm like, well, what part didn't right. work? X, Y, or Z? And they're like, um, well, and they start fidgeting. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't do it. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't do it. I'm sorry. What was that? I didn't hear that. Because they don't want to look at just be honest with me and say, I didn't do the work. I know it right. works. So be honest. If you, when you hire a coach, whether it's me or Kathy, just be honest. Because if we tell you to do something, we assume you do it unless you tell us otherwise. So just be honest. Mm -hmm. And so you want people who are coachable. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Who actually do the work. And, you know, for, for as a coach, it's because you care that they get results. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And it's frustrating when you work with people who don't do the work and you know, it's going to work if they do it, they don't do it. And then you get frustrated because you're like, oh, I, would, I, I wasn't able to help that person that felt so frustrating and they didn't benefit from it. So I hear I you. people do, who I are going to actually do the work. Yeah. I only work with a certain number of clients. I, I sat down one day and say, how many clients can I work on per day, per week, per month? And if I get a client who's not doing the work, that's a spot that someone who needed me could have used. So I get frustrated. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we've been doing this for two, three weeks. You're not doing any of the work. Why are you here? And I've not yeah. had to fire anybody yet, but a couple of people <laughs> close because I have other people who want to be on my schedule. And if I am yeah. dealing with someone who's not going to do the work, they're not coachable, then this other person who could need my help, I can't help them. And that kind of right. hurts me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you work with people who are coachable and um, who are going to do the work and who are feeling overwhelmed, stressed, want to have mm -hmm. life. And how about speaking? What kind of speaking um, gigs are you looking for? Well, Are you looking for speaking gigs? Well, I'm looking for speaking gigs, but I'm really picky now. Before COVID, I would just, if there's one person in the audience, I would be there. Now I'm like, okay, who is there? Okay. Are, do they really, are they coachable? Do they want to be there? Do, do they have a heart of a student? Okay. So I'm not mm, looking for specific groups. I love like, really. that. Heart of a student. I love that. Because, you know, there are people I go speak and they have to be there. The boss is yet to show up and they don't come with the right heart. They like, Oh, I got to be here. And they're on their phones or they're not listening. I want people to go, Oh, this guy can help me get the next level. That's who I want. And so I, I learned from Brendan Burchard many years ago is be very selective where you speak. Don't speak just because you're the center of attention. Make sure they want you there. Make sure you want to speak there. So let's say like someone says, Hey, listen, we're the, 
um, I'm going to come up with some really crazy. This like, organization does not exist. We're the we're the we're the cute dog murderers association. Okay, I would never <laughs> speak to that organization. <laughs> I just literally made that up. Okay. I love dogs. That's I got hilarious. A, I got a beautiful dog. I love dogs, but I would never speak to the organization. Do. Okay. I would never speak to them. I don't care how much money they gave me. I would never speak to them. If right. they say, um, we don't like people who have Polish last names. I would never speak to the organization. <laughs> so I am selective when I speak. I want people who have a heart of a student who want to be there, who really want to take their company to the next level. I'm not, I'm not an entertainer. I'm an, I'm an entertaining, but I'm not you there are, to tell jokes. Oh man. Oh, <laughs> okay. I like that. You said you're entertaining. You're not an entertainer. Cause I was going to say, who are you kidding? You're yeah. definitely an entertainer. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't juggle. I don't sing. I don't tell, tell <laughs> jokes, but I will give you lots of value. And if you don't get any value, you will walk out of there feeling really good after you see me. You won't go. That was boring. No one has ever said my presentation is boring. And when I come, sometimes when I speak with people, you know, they're like, you have too much energy. You got to settle down. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> you want me to be boring? I don't know what that means. Isn't that interesting? Because I get that same reaction sometimes, Mark. Uh, you don't need to be all that. I, I get it. You don't need to do all that. And I'm like, do all what? <laughs> and they're like, you know, be all up and perky and bubbly and everything. And I'm like, I don't know how not to be like this. So if this bothers you, please don't work with me. Yes. <laughs> and then that. they're like, oh, this is really you. This is you all the time. I'm tired. I'm tired just being with you. And I'll bet you get that too, that people get tired. Mm hmm. You have to like, that's not you ever, your audience. Do you ever relax? I'm like, uh, yeah, I do, but, uh, this not is relaxing. You, yeah, this is relaxing. No, they're not my audience. If you, right. it, yeah, we've already, we, I don't want to keep saying the same thing and talk about talking with circles, but I think people know okay. I want people okay. really want to become better. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, we're wrapping up now cause, uh, we both have, uh, we have tight schedules here that we stick to because we do processes and systems, uh, yes. Mark and I do. Mark, thank you so much for being on here. Is there anything that I forgot to ask you about or any message you want to get out there to the listeners? No, I just invite people. Now, there I did it again. I did the same thing I, everyone does. Do you have anything else to say? No, except I, I hate It's a habit I'm trying to break. <laughs> uh, I should have said, yeah, as a matter of fact. I just want people to go to my website, mrproductivity.com, M-I-S-T-E-R, mrproductivity.com. If you do nothing else, do two things which are free. Number one, sign up to be a free Mark Strzeski insider. You get productivity tips and exclusive content. I only send to my list. You can also find out where I am on social media. At the bottom of the page is all my links. And then you can get the direct links to my podcast because you probably can't spell Strzeski. But if you go to my website, you can click on the podcast tab. When it opens up, all the links to all the podcast players are there. Or you can try to find me on Apple Podcasts um, if you look at my name. But everything's at mrproductivity.com. By the way, it takes you to markstrzeski.com. So it's not a bait and switch. I do it for the <laughs> podcast. So when you type in mrproductivity.com, you hit enter. You go to markstrzeski.com. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't have to learn how to spell his name all you have to know how to spell is mr productivity yep and if you even get close i'm sure google will help you out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you cannot tell i highly recommend um listening to mark's podcast i am on your lit your email list and i get your newsletter and even just the subject lines uh i go oh that's interesting and i open that one up uh, you are a very good speaker and writer and you share great tidbits. So thank you. thank you, Mark, for being on here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.